Hi, everyone. Welcome to the open book. I am your special host, Lakeisha Mabry. And y'all, thank you for joining us. It has been a minute. I think our last open book was last year. Okay. <laughs> We are in a new year, uh, and and actually, I'm so excited about this interview because I wanted it to be the first interview of the year, and it is with Michelle Loud, and a lot of you have probably heard her name more recently since last year uh, about her story, and she's going to talk about some of that today, um, and I actually met Michelle uh, on Facebook and got a chance to really follow her, uh, hear more of her story. And she has a new book, y'all, called Dare to Stand. And today, you know, we're going to talk about her book, what promoted, what prompted, I'm sorry, her to start her book. And she's going to give us an overview of her story um, and get more into that. But we're very, very excited to have her here. Michelle, thank you for joining us. How are you today? I'm good. <laughs> it is a Saturday. I was uh, telling Michelle earlier that it has been a busy Saturday so far. And um, I just wanted her to come on. And I know it's busy for her as well. So we thank you for coming to the open book to share your story and to talk about your new book, Dare to Stand. So Michelle, um, I remember like, I don't know, you could probably remind me of the year when the video came out where you were in your car and you were crying and you were, this was like the, the major like turning point where a lot of us heard this story. Cause I, you know, this is the open book. We believe in being transparent. So some of the people may have felt like I did like, who is this girl? What's going on? Cause I haven't heard this. So at that time, what, what year did that video come out? Was that last year? Yes, that was May 18th, 2022. Okay, May 18th. So, wow, that was last year. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and then take us to that point with that video because that prompted us first starting to get into this story. What made um, you come out on that video? Well, my name is Michelle Lau. I'm a mom of five and um, I'm also a licensed cosmetologist. And um, currently studying law, as well as medical billing and coding. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm a person. I'm a mom. Um, that's, that's about it, about me. But what prompted the video was I had, I had heard about Cora going through a divorce. And I had heard about why she was going through the divorce, but I didn't have like confirmation. Like I didn't know what child, whose child, um, anything like that of the charges against Brittany. So once the charges were made known, like I was just overwhelmed with thoughts, emotions, like, cause my child was also in the, in the home. So I immediately went into this mama bear protective mode because I know that I had been trying to get my son for years behind closed doors and was trying to respect the fact that they were a public figure, but that wasn't getting me anywhere. And once the charges against Brandon was made known, it was just like, nah, we ain't, we ain't about to be quiet no more about this. And so that's how that video came, originally came about. Um, I think I had just got to the point where I was tired of, you know, um, trying to, I don't know, I wouldn't say do things the right way, but I guess you handle people how they handle you. You know, if, if somebody is fighting with fire, you got to fight with fire back. And so um, that's that's what happened. I was very, very, very much so concerned about my son, even more at that point. And I just had to let it be known, like, y'all got all this stuff going on and y'all taking people's kids and I ain't the only person kids y'all tried to take or to. So it was, it was that, it was, it was that, definitely. Okay, and then just to kind of take you all back, 
when I first saw the story and uh, Michelle is talking about her son, Jason, and she'll get more into uh, the overview of that. Um, I was drawn to her as a mother, first of all, as a mother. Um, my heart went out to her and I wanted to hear the story of why this mother did not have her son, okay? Um, this has nothing to do with particular people because I know the Jakes are very well known. And if we take the name out, I want you guys to be open to hearing her story, okay? This is about just justice and being right and what is fair. And if this mom wants to get her son back, and there are no reasons why she should not be able to, then what can be done to bring Jason home? Hashtag bring Jason home. Let's be yes, clear. Please, please. <laughs> That's what uh, Michelle <laughs> always says. And so please, I started, please. by right, right. You know, I, I kept that ear open to this story and I followed Michelle since that first video. And when I tell you guys her story, she's very transparent. Her story has not changed, okay? You know how like sometimes, and this is the open book, we're transparent. Sometimes we hear these stories and we're like, mm -hmm. we're waiting for a person to say something that contradicts something that they said that has not happened, okay? Um, and so I want you guys today to really hear her story. And I have a picture I wanted to show. Uh, and y'all, I'm not just a high tech person, but... This will do. <laughs> but this is a picture of Jason, Michelle's that's, son. That's the last time I seen Jason physically. Wow. This so how this old was, was the he? Last time. Um, this was in 2018. Wow. So he was, I think he was four. Okay. He was four years old in this picture. Oh my goodness. So this is her son, Jason. He was four in this picture. Okay, mm -hmm. and then this is Cora Jakes. Uh, those of you who do not know her, she is the daughter of Bishop T.D. and Lady Sarita Jakes, okay? So that kind of brings us to this uh, part in the story of how, kind of uh, tell us how did you all meet and where did this begin? We met at church. Um, I was like 10, 12 years old. And we met at the Pirates house. My family, my mom had a friend that um, went to the Pirates house. Well, she was visiting the Pirates house. And then she eventually joined the Pirates house. But we were still like visiting because we had our church back home, church for the deaf. Youth. But my mom was like, God is transitioning us to move church homes. And so um, I had did like a program for the church with the dance ministry because I'm also a trained dancer. And so um, we did the program and I think about a year, maybe two years later, we officially joined the church. So I met Cora in new members orientation, both times I met her. But the second time we met, you know, we just, we, we remained friends. And that's how I know them. <laughs> that's how I grew up with Cora. We grew up together, we grew up in church. We hung out outside of church. We lived together. <laughs> Um, more than once um, so I'm not just a, a random person um, I was her friend always um, I know now as an adult that it was a very one-sided uh, friendship um, but yeah that's how I know oh. them and Cora was uh, my oldest daughter original godmother when I had her so you know um yeah, that's that's how I know her. Okay, so let's uh, go back to when Jason was born. Okay, so y'all had known each other. Um, mm -hmm. And did you stay with them a little time? How did she get connected to you and Jason? Um, we reconnected, um, I believe it was Easter 2014. And it was at a, uh, the church had did like a Easter egg hunt or something like that at a park or whatever. And um, I like ran into her and we began talking and I was already at a low place in my life at that point in time. I was pregnant. I was depressed. Um, I didn't want to be pregnant with my fourth child. I didn't want to be pregnant at, at all. OK, um, as a woman, I just want to be transparent and clear, like a lot of women deal with that, that 
they get pregnant and it's not something that they want at their present time in their life. And at that time, I was like, I'm already low. You know, I have a lot going on. I'm not stable. I'm not financially stable. You know, I'm going through with my kids dad. Like, I just felt ashamed. I felt embarrassed. I felt like this is not supposed to be my life. Um, but because of people that know me and know where I come from, um, I felt like I was a big disappointment. And this is all while being pregnant. So I was depressed and everything like that. And I just began to tell her like my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions, you know, because I felt like I had let a lot of people down. Um, and she prayed with me. She prayed on my belly and she was like, you know, I'll be here for you, whatever you need, you know, call me. So when I went into labor, um, I didn't have anybody else I could call. Um, yeah, my mom couldn't go to the hospital with me because she was uh, there with my kids. And I didn't want to have Jason by myself in the hospital. And I didn't want to be by myself in a hospital. Um, one, because it's really scary. And two, childbirth is really serious. Anything can happen in that room um, with the mother giving birth. And um, I didn't want to be alone. And so I called her. And I was like, I'm, I'm, get, I'm going into labor. I'm getting ready to have Jace, my baby. And mind you, I had already had Jason's name picked out, OK? I, I had already had his name picked out. I named him after my birth. Mm -hmm. Now, I at named this him time, at, I'm sorry to interrupt you. So at this time, Michelle, you had how many kids? I had three and I was pregnant with my fourth. Jason is okay. my fourth. So that can mm -hmm. be like, as a parent, overwhelming already because when you are ready. Very much I'm, so I'm single. <laughs> I'm a single. I'm single. I essentially don't have a place to stay that's in my name um i'm in between work right um 2014 i'm a fresh convicted feeling like i came out of and only and then listen i only did three weeks but it felt like three years <laughs> i can <imagine>. so, <laughs> it felt like three years girl so this this three and then um you know just going through a really really hard time in life and then I'm battling depression you know it was like I was a high function depressive person right so I'm battling depression I'm trying to figure out how to take care of myself and the three kids that's already here and now you add another baby on top of that so then me and my mom's relationship wasn't good I didn't have the support that I needed. And so, yeah, it was like, you know, this couldn't have happened, have happened at the wrong time. But for me personally, I am pro-choice, but I also don't believe in getting abortion myself. So I feel like if you laid in that bed, you make that bed. <laughs> you know, you get in there, you you handle up on your responsibility. So I wasn't going to abort my child. I knew that. I wasn't going to give my child up. I knew that. But it was just like, damn, God, like right now, <laughs> you know, right now so much going on. So it was really like one of those situations. Okay. And so from there, because, and I was sharing with Michelle earlier that, I also can connect with her on that aspect because after my son Micah uh, was born, my mom passed away four days after that. And so mm -hmm. I was going through that postpartum slash postpartum grief. depression is really real. Right. It's really it real. Is really real. And people, you know, I know it's hard for some people to understand that unless you have been there. But it was even hard for me, you know, to connect and bond with my son, you know, uh, those first months. But life goes on. So I can only imagine like, you know, you're going through that. You're going through depression. So you needed yeah. help. And so poor. And I had him and I was the depression. And I had depression on top of postpartum depression. So See? it was like a double whammy with right. me. And I think that's 
another part that people are not getting understanding. Like it was depression and postpartum depression because those are two different types of depression, okay? So then I had that as well. So it was a lot mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I wasn't in my word as much. I wasn't praying as much, you know? It was just, girl, it was a lot. I know. And that's, and that's what, you know, I, I'm glad that you explained that because people want to know, like, you know, why didn't she just take her own child? Like, so it's going not that to, easy. Right. <laughs> it's not that easy. It's not that easy when you are already in a vulnerable state of mind. You're not yourself. So the person who you are, you know, strong minded, the person who you are, don't take no crap, don't take no shit. That person is not the person who you are when you're in a vulnerable, weak-minded state of mind, okay? You are easily manipulated. You are easily coerced, you know, because you're emo in, de in a depressive state, your emotions, it's almost like your hormonal emotions when you're pregnant. It's the best way I can describe it you're easily, you know, you're vulnerable. So it's easy for the, the enemy to come in and maneuver whichever way he wants to maneuver because you're not strong. You're not strong mentally. You're not strong physically. You're not strong spiritually, you know. So it was a lot. And I did have detachment issues. I had detachment issues and bonding issues um, after I had, when I had never had that before with any of my other children but that pregnancy was super super hard and not like hard as in carrying just hard as in everything that I was dealing with and going through I was homeless um I was staying in a hotel I was trying to fight for my, my family you know um move back home I had stayed with my sister when I moved back home then you know, that went left and I had to go stay with my brother. That went left and I ended up back at my, uh, well, then I went back to where my children's dad stayed and ended up staying in a hotel out there. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was, just, it was a lot. And it was all because people wouldn't lease to me because of my background, not because I, not because I couldn't work, not because I had evictions, because I've never had an eviction. I've never had a broken lease. I've always paid my bills on time, okay? So it wasn't because of any other thing. It was simply because I had a background. So I went from working in corporate America, working with Fortune 500 companies, having, you know, a, a condo on the Southwest side in the city. I ain't gonna say the city I was staying in, but in the city I was staying in to hitting rock bottom to not having nothing not even a car you know so that was a lot <laughs> that was a lot that was a hell of a lot it was new territory it was, it was something that I wasn't used to um because when I moved out of my mom's house and officially when I was 20 years old I moved out I moved out I went to another city I was working I had like two or three jobs had my own place life is good. And then things happen and I hit rock bottom. So to hit rock bottom, a place that I hadn't been to ever before as an adult was a lot and being pregnant on top of that. So yeah, that was a lot. And so when I had Jason, I did go through a like detachment, like, it, and I did I don't, I don't be liking to cry, you know that. <laughs> I know. Take your time, girl. I get it. Because when you start, I'm like, ah! <laughs> when I watch your videos, I'm like, oh, it, God, give her strength. It's um, it's not an easy thing to deal with, you know. It's not an easy thing to overcome. And um, I felt really, really bad, you know, that I didn't have the capacity to bond with him at that time 
um, because I was not mentally healthy. And um, that really fucked with me. That really disturbed me. But it was like, my body wouldn't even move to do it, you know? And um, and I didn't have, Cora wasn't trying to encourage me to do it. She wasn't trying to, um, you know, actually be there and comfort me through the postpartum de depression. And like, like you're supposed to do, right? If a woman is dealing with postpartum depression, you know, and let's say you have a husband, you have a wife, because living in that day and time, <laughs> you have a husband, you have a wife, you have a mother, you have a mother, father. Um, they're the help make you through to navigate through that postpartum depression. So if you like you have detachment issues like I have, they're there to after you feed the baby bring the baby to you, even if you're not going to hold the baby, that have the baby sitting by you, you know, that type of thing, like, it was none of that, it was none of that, it was, it was, it was no comfort, no, this is your baby, you know, I'm just here to help, it was words, but the actions was, was, was not there, so. Um, so during, Michelle, during this time where, you living at Cora's for those that don't haven't heard like your story. Uh -huh. I didn't stay with Cora after I had Jason. I didn't stay with Cora until 2016. Jason was born in 2014. Right. When we started court battling for Jason, he was two years old. So that was 2016. And that was a two year battle. So by the time we finished, he was three, but he turned four that May. And I've been fine since 2016. We're in 2023. Okay, so thank you. Those of you who are just joining, um, we are on live with Michelle Loud. Uh, she has a new book called Dare to Stand. And we are discussing an overview of her story because she talked about so many details in her book of this whole story. Uh, and also I'll give a shout out to Whitney D because I was uh, watching that interview, but Whitney D TV, oh, okay. uh, Cora, okay. uh, not Cora, Michelle went into a lot of details and it really gave me some missing pieces uh, to the puzzles of some things I was still wondering because not that you uh, you know, been inconsistent, but you tell more of this, like things more and more come out as you share your story. And I also see your healing process, you know, through this, because not like you, you said, you don't like to cry. Let me just stop you right there. Let me just stop you right there. <laughs> coming out, like, and when I say coming out, let's be clear, putting the name on it, because I've been talking. And if you really go back to 2015, I tweet, a. Uh, uh, made a status and said what do you do when you feel like you've made the wrong decision okay that's originally when my mind started I guess coming back to you know and um not originally but like when I started like really like Michelle something ain't this it's not it's not right it's not adding up um, so that was 2015. So that was actually a year after my son was born. So I, it's not that I just woke up one day and was like, oh, I want my baby. No, it's not. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm glad no, you clarified no. that because no. that was one of the questions. Like, you no. know, we're just hearing about it, but you've been fighting behind the scenes. A long time. A long time for this. A long time. A very long time. And I've been vocal about it. I just haven't I just didn't put a name on it until the allegations against Brandy came out because that took me honey it took me because I know the kids that I got that I'm raising in my household and who I let have around them babe I do external background checks I don't even bring if, if I'm talking to a guy you can't come around my kids you can't mm -hmm. even come to my house boo <laughs> it ain't it ain't giving that like I don't even I, I'm not that parent you know my kids can't go spend the night over people's houses I don't even do sleepovers in my houses. Y'all not being left unattended. Keep these doors open. I'm very much so old school. It's giving old school. You know, it's giving very old school. And I'm very <laughs> attentive to my children. You know, I'm there. I'm present. You know, right. I'm not an 
auntie mother i'm not on drugs never been on drugs so when and brandon out, brandon is for those that don't know brandon is uh cora jake's ex-husband right and mm -hmm. that's not jason's father can you clarify no. that no <laughs> okay <laughs> for those that were wondering uh, Jason, Brandon is Corey really, really be hating to tell people like y'all <laughs> so damn slow, dumb, stupid, and retarded. If y'all think this man, my my child's father, y'all just running with whatever somebody say. You know that ain't even no real journalist. Y'all just running with that narrative and y'all just taking it to the moon. Like sometimes you gotta make something make sense. Okay, you gotta make something make sense. I didn't even know that man. I didn't even, I wasn't there when Cora got married to that man. If that man was walking down the street, I had never seen him before. Like, he could probably say, I'm sorry, sir. I don't even know that man. I don't know that man. I didn't know that man. I met that man May 24, 2014, the same day I was leaving the hospital and she brought Brandy up. And you know what? When I think about that, we can get candid real quick. When I think about, when I think about that hospital stay, okay? From the time I had Jason, Cora was just over my son, okay? Just over him, snapping pictures. Like, if I sat him down, she picking him up. Like, she's telling me, oh, I got the baby. It looks like you're dealing with postpartum depression. Telling the nurses that as well. So, I was really wondering why she brought her husband, whom I had never met, to the hospital. Now, boom, it's a video. And then Corey says, I, I don't know if she's talking to Sarah, she's talking to somebody. And she was like, I picked Amari out and I brought my husband to the hospital and he picked Jason out. Okay, so now my, yes, yeah, I'm gonna go find that video. I think it's on that, that video, um, you don't have to birth the child to be a mother or some shit like that. Some. I don't know. I have to go find it. That that bitch. I mean, Lord. That girl. That girl said that. She said that on that video clip. And my mom was like, "Bitch, started this shit from the fucking beginning. You brought your husband and you manipulated your husband. I don't give a damn which. Hey, right, we'll get into that later. But it the 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 manipulation definitely started there. You bring your husband to the hospital was not. Hey, look, honey, this is my friend. She just had a baby come. You know, you brought your husband to the hospital to set up the play. I don't know what you went back and told him before you brought him to the hospital. But you brought him back up there to set the play because it wasn't no purpose for him being there. But anywho, that's the day that I met Brandon. It was May 24, 2014. So I didn't know Brandon prior. In order for me to have in order for Jason to be biologically his, that means I would have had to know him eight, because I had Jason at eight months. I have all my children at eight months. I don't know why I asked Lord. Um, that means eight months prior to me having Jason, I would have had to know you. And not just know you, but had sexual intercourse with you. Eight months prior to me having Jason, you were still married to Cora. So that means that I would have had an affair with you and got pregnant because Jason wasn't no surrogate. He wasn't a surrogate, baby. And I'm just like, y'all gotta, y'all gotta think. I just told y'all I I reconnected with Cora in April or March of 2014. My baby was born in May. What where would I have seen Brandon? Brandon is not Jason's biological father. And when you see me and his dad, Jason looks like his parents. He definitely looks like you too with the dimples. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so bring us up to the part of you losing custody of Jason. What happened with that part? I mean, which... <laughs> like, okay, because from the time he was born and now coming up to now he's with Cora, how did that happen? A lot of... People don't um, know how that She said that she place. was there to help me. So it was kind of like, you know, the best, the best um, comparison I can do is like a, a baby mama, baby daddy. Although 
she was the god mom, you know, in the aunt. So when you say you helping me, that mean when I need you to get the baby, you get the baby. If <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like if I need you to drop them off to the to the to the daycare, can you drop them off because I'm not able to do it because I'm trying to I'm working or whatever. Like you're helping, okay? So it was one of those type of situations. Never, Cora, I want to give you my baby. You know, you put you she planted those manipulative seeds in. So I guess because she already had in her mind what she was going to do. She, and she knew that she had to, she had to act swiftly because postpartum depression, depending on the woman, it can last five days. It can last a couple years. It just depends on the person. So she had it. She had, she knew she had to act swiftly because she didn't know what type of time frame she was on for me to still be in a vulnerable state. Two months after I had my son, she had me sign paperwork saying that it was just paperwork that she needed if she wanted to go fly with him or if I needed her to take him to the doctor for her. That was in July. August, September, you had me sign saying that it was the same paperwork. She just forgot to add something in it. So in I that part, when you do that, Michelle, that's not given custody right no. that wasn't giving custody and I okay. was giving custody I was just saying you you helping me you know you're not blood right. related and they so have to see those it, forms it don't forms. make it didn't, didn't get my head anything else. you're not blood related I know that when I have my mom take my daughter to the doctor I have to give e either verbal or written consent I know these things Jason isn't my first child you know so I'm not thinking I'm not thinking nothing of it you know and this is my friend i've known her since i was 10 or 12 years oh and i know you supposed to read shit but i don't need my right mind i just trusted what my friend told me you know damn i wish i would never did that you can't go back but um so yeah i didn't find out until we was actually in court hearings and we have to it, you have to exchange evidence right their team has to give your team what they have as evidence, and then you have to give your evidence to their team. So when once I got their evidence of what they were trying to use against me, basically all y'all was trying to use to keep my baby was paperwork that you made me sign under the wrist and that you falsely led me to believe what it was because it wasn't what she said it was. It was legal guardianship of paperwork and she got it notarized at the ups store not at the church not different notaries not a legit notary that would actually you know make you read it make you understand what you read make sure that this is what you're agreeing to because by law they have to do that you know what i'm saying it wasn't that it wasn't that it was at a ups store and i don't know why i didn't can't go back. And it's I funny because know that UPS when the did notary. <laughs> to be remember, when the paper it. was on on the on the thing, it was another blank paper on top of it. Oh, yeah, it was a blank paper. On, see, now I'm getting more details. Yeah, it was see, a, that's what I'm saying. I haven't heard this part. <laughs> it was a, it was a blank paper on top of it, and you know, I didn't uh, again. Out and then it's like when she had me come sign it, she knew I was already in a rush trying to get to work see she said that she said the time when she knew that i was you know getting ready to go to work so it i was like okay let me just sign this here because i gotta go you know what i'm saying i gotta go to work i can't be late because i was working in a warehouse at the time you know you warehouses that that baby you can't be like you gotta be on time especially during peak season you gotta be there you gotta be ready or you get fired honey they, they're not playing so she that's how she would really catch me too like when she knew that I was in a rush to get to work or I was in a rush to be somewhere and I really didn't have time to just sit down and really read and digest what is this you have me sign okay just tell me what it is and I sign it it was like that okay what is it what is it okay all right boom that's how it was you know but yeah she definitely played that situation so, so that was in July and then two months late September and then September she did that that following May is when she took me to um force me to sign my rights over. So that all of this happened within one year. Wow. 
within one year. Okay, when you say force you to sign your rights over, what do you mean by that? Prior to her taking me um, to Judge Faith office, um, she kept asking me about giving my baby up. I told her no. Then she would send like little things about open adoption and how adoption is good and how adoption can help telling me that my son needed stability, that he could be, you know, just coming back and forth like that, telling me, you know, when I was at her house to look around, you know, this is what he needs, you know. And in my mind, I'm like, of course, this is what all my kids need, you know, and this is what I'm trying to do. But, you know, the seed of discord, she was planning, like, he will be better out for her because of what she could provide and it ain't even what you could provide because honey you ain't got no money if your daddy ain't paying you let's <laughs> let's just be clear um so yeah it was one of those situations and then she started talking about how god had told her that i didn't have jason for me that i had him for him and that that's her guilt and that i know that god told and that i know that jason was hers and then um, she performed an exorcism on me. Her and this lady named Dr. Gaylena White um, at Chorus House, the 2423 Canyon Springs Drive in Grand Prairie, Texas, 75052. Because I don't know, I already put the address up there. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, you can run data checks on people's name and that address going to pop up. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, you know, it was at their address, and um, yeah, and then like they performed a the whole like the 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 candles was lit, the ladies was walking in a circle because it was other ladies there speaking in tongues, and then Dr. Galena White, who is Cora's spiritual mom, um, she was the one who was doing it and everything like that, and no, they didn't have an interpreter of tongues. They was just all speaking in tongues and they laid me down on the floor and she like prayed over my body from foot to head and then from head to foot. And I had this promise ring that I had on that I would wear that I got as I had Jason because I made a promise, you know, that I'm going to do what I have to do to get where I need to be to take care of my children. She took that promise ring off. Okay. Doing that during the accident and that's I always say this part because I feel like it's very important I feel like what she was doing in the spirit in that moment was detaching and breaking any possible bond um that I had with my son and getting into the mind right I feel like this but that's what happened. Cause when I got up from it, I was terrified at my, I was terrified. I, it wasn't no peace. I wasn't of peace. I wasn't of any of that. I was terrified like, oh Lord, what am I going to do? What have I gotten myself into? But also feeling like, well, I don't have no help. You know, I don't have no support. So where do I go? You know, but once I got up from, once they, you know, finished doing their little de demonic rituals, I got up and, <laughs> and she was like, I had a vision. Um, and God told me that you had, excuse me, that you had your son for Cora and Brandon. I saw your son sitting on Brandon's lap and on the throne with God and he was just smiling and laughing and then that's how I knew that God had given you your son for Brandon and Cora and to be well with it allow it to be well with your soul is what that lady said and I posted proof of that on my page as well mm -hmm. they, oh that's what they did so then yeah. then hold on I ain't done okay so go then, ahead so then, you know, I was still like, still trying to figure out like how to get out of this. Now I'm scared. Okay. Now I'm like, y'all people is crazy. What are, what is, what, 
like how do I get my baby and how do I remove myself so in my mind I'm trying to come up with different plans but not like where it's noticeable you know what I'm saying because I'm really scared out of my mind at this point so then Cora you know a couple months later came I don't really remember if it was before the exorcism or after the exorcism but what is the fact and what is true is that she called me over to have dinner because she's always cooking and when I got over there we was chilling whatever and then she made me go upstairs well not made me but you know was like come upstairs in um, Brandy's office so Brandy was already in the office once we got there was it any lights on just the projector just the projector that was on. And when we got in, she shut the door and she locked it, slammed me up against the wall and told me that if I did not give her my baby, that she was going to take him from me. That's what she said. If you don't give him to me, I'm going to take him from you. That's how it is. I, I can laugh about it now. But in that moment, I was terrified. That's exactly how she did it. Dramatic and all. That's exactly how she did it. Mm -hmm. She did that. And then after that, May comes. I'm trying to, like, get through the story. After that, May comes, and she calls me over again. And it's time me and the kids. We come over to the house. And she was like, you know, Michelle, I want you to ride me somewhere. This is the day after we came over to eat. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not, of course, thinking nothing of it again. And um, again, the car, now she's talking, right? And the things that she's talking about, it should have gave me pause on what the fuck was going on. But again, my mind was so out of it. Like, in that time, I was just constantly thinking about how can I make as much money as I need to make to get me and my kids a place to stay. That was the only thing on my mind. So even when people were talking to me, I would hear you, but I wouldn't be listening because in my mind, I'm thinking about getting out this, this hole that I'm in, getting out of this dark place I'm in, getting out of this struggle that I'm in, you know, and it was a constant thing on my mind 24-7. But some of the things that she was saying on the way there was like, you know, we love you and we love Jason and Jason is always going to be well taken care of. I'm always going to be here for him. These are the type of things that she's saying leading up to us going to Judge Faith Justin's office. Now, we call it Judge Faith because she used to be a judge, but at this time, she's a lawyer. Okay. So she's she's saying all these things, you know. I'm not really thinking no, no, I'm just thinking like, okay, thank you, I appreciate it. Whatever. Well, we get to the office, that helper saying that shit, cause she finna force me to sign my rights over right then and there. And that's what she did. And when I didn't want to do it, she got up from her seat and she came over there to me and firmly pressed her hand on my back and told me that I was gonna do it. I shall do it. I will do it. I didn't, it wasn't, no, we're not walking out of here unless you're signing your rights over. That's that's the energy she gave. Mm -hmm. So in that moment though, what made you like, was there anyone you could like kind of ask for help during the court? She secluded me. She secluded me. Through that whole time, like Jason's first year of birth, she secluded me. For my family, she made sure that she kept planting negative seeds about my mom in my head, about my sister. Like if me and my sister got into an argument and my sister like would share, you know, whatever she would to Cora, Cora would then bring it back to me because she knew I didn't like that, right? So she would be like, you know, look what your sister saying, stuff like that. So of course that's naturally gonna make me be like, well, I ain't, I ain't finna, you know what I'm saying, fuck with my sister, right? So she'll do stuff like that to seclude me from my family, to make me feel like she was the only person I had in my corner supporting me and my son, Jason. And when I look back on it, like, you wasn't worried about the other kids. You wasn't worried about the three kids before Jason. Hell, you wasn't even worried about the kid after Jason. You was only worried about Jason. And if I'm so unfit to take care of Jason, then I'm unfit to take care of all of them. 
I'm unfit to take care of all of them. If I'm so unmentally stable for one, I'm so unmentally stable for all of them. But she wasn't concerned about all of them because they wasn't the babies. Jason was the baby and she can't have kids. So she wants to get kids by any means necessary. Yeah. Wow. And so that was the day that they obtained custody for her husband of Jason. Illegally, though. Mm -hmm. Because it's just a sheet of paper at that point in time. It's not a legal sheet of paper until the judge terminates the rights. Only a judge can terminate the rights. Only a courthouse can terminate the rights. And they can only terminate rights if the child has been abandoned for six months or more. And um, if the parent doesn't contest to the rights being terminated, which wasn't the case. So my rights should never got terminated at all. And Jason's dad, his rights okay. was definitely illegal. <laughs> what was he? What I was mean, Jason's dad during this time? Like, and that's the, the thing that I don't understand. Y'all know y'all didn't do right when it came for sure. Didn't do right, and I don't want to. I y'all better not bring when we go to court let me tell y'all something y'all better not bring up some news clipping that y'all tried to say that y'all put out in 2018 because that's a motherfucking lie it's photoshop y'all copied it y'all scanned it y'all did whatever y'all did because y'all can't even tell me jason's dad's name number one his birthday where he live and where, where he from you can't you i mean i don't know but you y'all can't y'all so you can't tell me that you didn't put no psa out on the internet on Facebook, on social media, you didn't send no certified copy mail to his address. Like you didn't make it known to this man that he uh that it was a court battle going on concerning the rights of y'all child. Y'all know y'all didn't do this. So I don't even this thing. This is what angers me the most too. You can put me aside. Put me aside, right? Put me aside. Put me aside because people like say, oh, you signed over your right. Well, okay, fuck all that. Okay, yeah, I did. Okay, cool. But that man didn't. <laughs> and that's that a big didn't. factor. Yeah, that man didn't. Y'all didn't even come look for this man. Y'all didn't even search for this man. Y'all didn't even contact this man. Y'all asked that judge the, the last day when y'all manipulated and forced me into agreement yet again through the court system, okay, because we can get into that too. Y'all, they lawyer asked the judge without having to show any proof that she had do her did her due diligence according to the state law pinnacle in the pinnacles, okay? Because your girl know the law now, okay? So according to the state law, the rules in the pinnacles of Texas that she, that she did her due diligence trying to find this child's father and was unsuccessful, and so now she's asking the court to grant his to, to grant termination of his rights and any potential father's rights she didn't say that what she said was your honor we want to ask you to terminate the father's rights as well as any potential father's rights the judge was supposed to come back and say have you did x y and z and where is the evidence that you did x y and z so it can be put into docking that's how it's supposed to go them motherfuckers didn't do that. So they know either way it go when it comes to Jason, all the way around, they was wrong. They manipulated the courts. They paid off the lawyers. They paid off the judge. The judge who presided over the case immediately retired after our case. Are you serious? My lawyer, my lawyer, let me tell you, this is another oh shit I ain't gosh. sure. My lawyer, my lawyer name was Jerome Sturski, okay? That was my original lawyer. That man, when I started back fighting for my child, like pro se, I ran into him. I ran into the man that is in, okay, because his office is another lawyer in his, it's like an upstairs, downstairs type of situation, business downtown forward. And he has a partner upstairs or whatever, I guess it was a partner upstairs. I'm not, black man. Well, we in the law library and I see him, he's sitting next to me and I say, no, you you work in Jerome Sturski's office. At that time, that's when I had begun to put together, you know, oh, they were all in cahoots. My lawyer, their lawyer, and the judge, they was all in cahoots. Because, you know, I've researched my own story. I, I, 
I've spent so many hours studying and just like you know how in the movies they had their wild and you got the stuff pinned up yeah honey mm -hmm. i didn't did a lot of lead work behind closed doors so um researching and investigating things like that so we i'm at the la la berry and i'm trying to get sidetracked i'm at the la la berry and um the dude the lawyer from up top in mrs thirsty's office he comes and he's sitting down next to me mm -hmm. So I get to talking to him. I'm like, oh, I know you. You know, you in the same building with Mr. Stursky. He's like, yes, I am, whatever. I said, well, you know what? God is about to rain. I said, because I believe the Jakes paid him off. I believe the Jakes paid him off and through and through my case at trial. And then I began to tell him why I felt that way. I began to tell him how he agreed to not mention Bishop T.D. Jakes in a pre preliminary hearing, which I don't know why he agreed to do that when my son has been around T.D. Jakes, when my son has been to his house, when my son goes to the church. You have to be able to mention <laughs> T.D. Jakes. <laughs> you have to be a This is T.D. Jakes' daughter. Who is your parents? Thomas Dexter Jakes Sr., Sarita and Jakes, like you, we have to be able to mention him. Why would you agree not to mention him? That means at any point in time, if you agree in a preliminary hearing not to mention this man's name, at any point in time you mention it, they can the opposing side can jump up and say, Judge, we want a mistrial. And that's and, exactly what they do. And you know what, Rochelle, before you continue, I wanted to uh, uh, give an example of that just happening recently. Uh, Fred Hammond came on live, and one of his family members is in a case. Uh, right now where he I guess is involved and they told him that he could not you know come in there because he's a celebrity mm -hmm. name and, and so forth he couldn't even come in the courtroom and so forth so it's those not, things that is crazy they seen somebody he can't come in the courtroom I was like wow so okay I'm sorry it's probably yes but yes so they was like he, I was like you have to be able to mention his man name but see in this case it was just basically if if their lawyer agreed then they would have been able to mention name and the and if they didn't agree the judge could have override it but according to this according by law if my child has been at this man's home inside this man's home around him at his church this is his daughter that see that's that's different this is his daughter i i have to be able to say this man's name I have to be able to say this man's name, <laughs> you know, and so that's how the uh, that's how the first child got thrown day one and opening statement. We didn't even get to no witnesses and nothing like this was opening statement. Okay, prior to the court hearing on day one, he was trying to get me to take up a, a an agreement deal. He was like, "Well, you want to walk away with something? You want to just think of it as a potato? You don't want to walk away with not none of the potato? You, you want to? I'm looking at this nigga like, oh, I can't make it. I'm looking at this man a like, potato. <laughs> what? Oh. I said, no, I'm not taking it. I want my son. Then that man went in there and threw that damn case. So I'm talking to the to the guy and I'm telling him like he was paid off. And I know he was paid off because you can't tell me any lawyer that would throw a case like that in the opening statement. They that man and he old. You've been in law. You've been doing law for probably longer than I've been alive. Okay, so you can't tell me that you don't know how this is supposed to go. And then I went into the judge and I went into I went into the whole story with him. That man got up. He was like, it was nice meeting you, nice talking to you. I wish you well with the case. I look up about a month later, Jerome Stursky is out there building. He's no longer practicing law. So that was two people that That's immediately people. after that case. Now, is that case sealed? Like that case is still. Wow. That's why I'm trying to get it understood. That case is still. Yeah. So wow. you can't tell me when when you when you look at that and put it's not a coincidence that you just up and stop practicing law. No, y'all stop practicing law to save your own ass because y'all know y'all did some shit wrong and y'all know y'all did shit not according to the law. And y'all know that y'all aided and abated with ripping this child away from his mother. And y'all know that y'all was taking deals up under the table. It ain't right. And you can't tell me that it is. Not with the information that I know now. 
And you know that, that and that's part, why the case can be unsealed. The case can be unsealed because it was malpractice done in the case. The case can be unsealed because they did not follow the law in the case. The case can be unsealed because they illegally terminated that his father's rights. The case can be unsealed because it was never supposed to go as far as it went. When I wrote my rebuttal to what they had filed in court and I told that judge, I do not want to give my child, that's it, that's all. It's no continuance of anything. It's no continuance of anything. If, if I say, and I hadn't abandoned him, my baby hadn't been with him for six months or more, my baby was with me, I was taking care of him, I was providing him and could provide proof that I was still doing that. He was still on my insurance. Okay, that is a big deal in Texas. Okay, that provides proof when you insure your children men <laughs> men that need to insure your kids when you insure your kids you are letting the the state and the government know that you are active and and that gives you that gives you some type of care custody and control right so you cannot say that i abandoned my child so you illegally file paperwork because the, the 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 signing of the rights that I signed in the the lawyer's office, she didn't file that was in 2015. She waited to file it until 2016. Okay. You were supposed to file that 11 days after the signature was on there. You didn't, you did not. You did not do that. You waited over a whole year to file it, and you only waited over a whole year to file it because. Y'all didn't think that that y'all they didn't think that they was gonna have to file it. But once I started realizing what the fuck was really going on, and I started making some moves, and the day that um I had got Jason that September, I knew something was off because she had I had got him and she had an iPad with him when she gave it to me. I turned that bitch off. No, you ain't finna track me with my son bitches you crazy you know so now i'm coming back to michelle <laughs> you know what i mean now at this point now i'm you know i'm not no i'm not no it's like bitch what's up because now 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 i know what the fuck you know what i'm saying now I know. so you came to yourself <laughs> yes i i was i was the word i was the word honey and then it's like everything that happened with that and I was just like okay I'm gonna just do it the right way so I was gonna initiate in the courtroom because I was under the pressure that when I signed my rights over that that was it not knowing that I still had my rights not knowing that I could have kept my child you know not knowing that I'm thinking and my family didn't know either because she secluded me you know so I, I wasn't talking to my family I wasn't letting them know what was going on I wasn't letting them know all the things that she was saying to me and how she you know would have me so they didn't know you know my they didn't know my family didn't know and so um yeah and so once I found out that it was just a sheet of paper I was like okay and so I, I was given advice to go check the records in the courthouse to make sure that it wasn't foul. And if it wasn't foul, then that's basically just a sheet of paper. And I could go get my son right now if I wanted to from her address and call the law and get him. So when I did that, when I went to go check the records, that's when I found that they had fouled in court the same day that they dropped Jason off to me, filed in court the, the, the termination of rights. So y'all again y'all they be setting shit up in motion and i feel like she did that because she realized okay michelle is coming back to herself and she's going to won't she's not gonna go for this she's gonna because she already know i'm smart i'm smart as hell i'm very i'm a very smart individual i'm very intelligent i'm very intellectual i'm very cultured i graduated when i was 16 years of age I'm not dumb by four. There's nothing dumb about me. I might talk crazy a little bit, might cuss here and there, but I'm very smart. I can break you down. I'm very college educated. And that whole note is, okay? So she tried to hurry up and get stuff in motion. You know what I'm saying? But once I found that out, I immediately filed a response. Once I filed my response and said, this is not what I want. And not only that, they're lying in this, that affidavit because in the affidavit they said that he had hey 
That's me. I have to I have to separate mine because I'll be fussing. Like, get back in. I don't understand. You hear me talking like you know what's going on. Stop there. Be quiet. So in, in the affidavit, 